Good All afternoon, right. my name may, good afternoon. My name is Jim Conlon and welcome to this episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show each week, we premiere a new movie or a TV series that is debuting here in Ireland and the UK, and especially here in Ireland where Irish eyes are smiling. And up for discussion is uh, this week is a movie that has been roughly seven years in the making. It first began uh, filming back in 2016, and it was due to be released a year later in 2017. It was filmed in Tuscany, uh, Rome, Italy, but for uh, various uh, reasons and various uh, things that came a cropper, the movie has been pushed back for roughly around seven years. But finally, after all this time, it's making its much wanted uh, release uh, this uh, next week. Uh, all across cinemas here in Ireland. It's called Wonder Well. Uh, it features an all-star cast, including Rita Ora, Kira Mildwald, and uh, the one and only, the great Carrie Fisher. In fact, it was Carrie Fisher's last ever movie before sad uh, passing. And our special guest this evening, uh, the one and only Vincent Spano. Uh, Vincent uh, has been, uh, what I say, uh, a movie ambassador throughout the decades in terms of TVs and series from his very first movie back in 1979, uh, of the movie called Over the Edge, where he played Mark uh, throughout over 30, 40 years in the industry. He's played numerous ty types of roles in certain sort of movies and TV series uh, throughout the decades. And uh, Vincent, uh, wonder well, before we came on air, you said you're excited uh, about its release after seven years in the sort of making. Uh, did you think at one stage that it mightn't come to our cinema screens? I think after seven years, you start to wonder, are they ever going to figure this out? Now, you think about how many possible uh, channels there are in which to, to distribute something now, especially with the streaming market. So I figured eventually this is going to happen. And I'm very happy to hear they finally figured it out. You know, it also was, I think, a very visual effects heavy movie. And Vlad, the director, is a perfectionist. And I'm sure he just wanted to make sure he just got it right. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm not involved on the filmmaking side. I was just, you know, in, in front of the camera when we did it in Italy. But I think uh, it's a combination of all those three things. And can you remember, Vincent, going back in terms of how you got involved in the project? Was it the, the original sort of talent agent sort of role? Did someone reach out for you in terms of your character, Franco? Or did you happen to be in Italy at the time in terms of how did it come about? Did you got involved in this project? Well, I got involved because of my dear old friend, Fred Roos. We've been working together since the literally the early 80s when he cast me in The Black Stallion Returns. And then of course I did Rumblefish for him. And Fred and I have kept in touch ever since. We've gotten close on some films that I was supposed to direct actually, or that I would even come with him, uh, along with him as a producer on. So Fred and I have always been close. I consider him kind of like a, a cinema uncle in a way. And uh, it was Fred who called me and he told me about this project and he said, you got to read the script. It was a it was a Monday or a Tuesday. And I literally read the script that evening, that afternoon. And then I was on a plane on Thursday to Italy for nine weeks. Wow. Wow. It was a very quick turnaround. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know what happened if they had other ideas and they didn't work out. It's pretty much the the way movies are. But when they came to me, I was all in. I thought this is a terrific character. And uh, it looked like a really fun project with all these great young people, you know, these roles for these young people. And heck, Italy, that's my second home. So I was all in. 
Yeah, and you mentioned that that sort of two day uh, turnaround before accepting the role, and then two days later you're in Rome, uh, Rome, Italy. And how long did you spend in Rome? Were you good six to eight weeks in Rome? And was it sort of hectic? Was there uh, as a cast did you sort of bond fairly sort of closely? Obviously, you the musical talents of Rita Ora there as well. Was she there for those whole weeks uh, there with she as well? Well, if you ask the cast, uh, you know, uh, Bash, Nell, uh, Nico, Kira, Rita, they know that I was the karaoke guy when we okay. made the movie. Because I loved to, to bring everybody together when we could on the weekends and just have them have fun and sing. And I love to sing. And so I, in all sorts of places, I think over the course of the film, I threw six separate karaoke parties. That includes two locations in Tuscany. Uh, well, I think one was north of Rome, then in Tuscany, then in Rome itself. So a total of six karaoke parties. And finally, we got Rita to come to the last one and she sung up a storm and we had such a great time. And it was just for us, it was just private. Yeah. And is there any sort of Jewish or hidden video going uh, the, going through the rounds of uh, a duet between Vincent Spano and Rita Ora that might uh, appear later on in the years in terms of uh, a cover version? No, I think Rita and I didn't actually do a duet together. She just got up and killed it. And I think she also sang with uh, one of the one of the other females. They might have done a duet. But yeah, everybody's got little videos from their cameras of the time. There's all sorts of stuff. And you know, seven years is a long time. Very young people. I mean, Rita was what, in her mid twenties then. Now she's a woman in her early thirties. I mean, she's a woman now, you know? And the kids were all so young. They're all older now. They all look different. They're all, you know, in a whole other time in their lives, you know? But back then, Everybody was young and we were just having a great time. So we we got very close. We even had a WhatsApp uh, group and everybody was always updating everybody about what's going on in their lives and what was happening. It was one of those really uh, very bonding experiences. And for me, being older and coming in with all these young people, I just love young people. I love being around them, hearing their, you know, their view of the world and watching their amazing uh, appreciation and enthusiasm about things, especially on this film, they, they were really loving this film and this, and this experience of working together. And so I came in a little late. Like I said, I was cast at the last minute. I had to hop on a plane. So they had already started getting to know each other. I can't remember if they had shot anything yet. I think it was all pre-production, but they had been there a while getting to know each other. And so I arrived in the middle of them already having a, a bonding and then they welcomed me in you know the older guy came in and i think it was the karaoke parties that really put the put the uh you know the lid on it where i was like okay this guy's one of us he's he's here to to have fun with us and Vincent, when you heard Carrie Fisher, the legend that was Carrie Fisher was going to be involved in that project did that almost sell it for you as well I don't think I knew Carrie was doing it when I got the part. I just went based on the script and my part. It was a treat to hear that Carrie was doing it, obviously. And she hung out with us, too. Now, Carrie was a an October birthday, a Libra, like me. And so when we got there, uh, my birthday was shortly. I'm October 18th. I can't remember what day Carrie's was, but we... I think it might have been after mine, uh, but we had a party. We had a party for me, karaoke. I had a karaoke party for me. That was the first one. Then we had a karaoke party for, well, actually, no, we had, it wasn't karaoke, but we just, we all got together and celebrated Carrie's birthday. And it gave us a chance to get to know her more and everything. Remember, I, I, in the film, I don't have any scenes with Carrie. Pretty much only the little girl does, you know, uh, Kira. And Vincent was, 
uh, was carrying good health uh, throughout that movie. Obviously, she passed away six weeks afterwards. But from the time you were initially, was she in good health? Was she vibrant? Was she full of life? Uh, was there no signs that her health was fading? Zero. She was absolutely in great spirits. Her health was perfect. Uh, she and I, we just got on really well. I don't know. She kind of reminded me. She just had that free spirit and that, you know, um, really centered strength uh, that it reminded me of my mom. So we got really close. And I remember, you know, she'd have Gary with her, her dog. That was like, you know, it was always carrying Gary. And I remember we were staying in one of the one of the hotels up in Tuscany, and it really wasn't a hotel. It was it was like a 500 year old palace that had been, you know, turned into this hotel and it looked like a museum you know <laughs> we were staying in like this museum and carrie was having trouble with gary like wandering all over the place and uh you know relieving himself in areas around the hotel so when i was she was going to stay there for a little while longer to sh shoot and i was done i was going back to rome i i re i learned about this issue with gary i said come with me i want to show you my room because I had a little outdoor area where you could open these and, she, and Gary could go out. And she's like, oh, this is great. This is great. I said, yeah, they didn't really want me to tell you about this because there's no handrail going up these certain stairs. And they were worried she could fall. And it was a little precarious. I mean, it, this was an old, old building. And, you know, it was a turning staircase with these you know little steps turning around and there was no way to hold on. So anyway, she took the room and uh, I think her and Gary were very happy. And and uh, that was um, that was something nice I could do for her at the time. Yeah. And uh, Vincent, your character, Franco, I know we're going back seven years. What can you remember? If you can remember anything about him, what was he sort of described or what's your sort of memories of what type of guy he was and his sort of role in this movie? Well, I'm working with Rita. Rita is the fashion designer and I'm her photographer. So it's important that we get the right, you know, representation for the for the line of clothing. And that means picking the right models. And that was a big part of my role is, you know, finding the right model to to join our campaign. And that's how Nell Tiger Free becomes our our, our model for the campaign. And then uh, you know, I'm involved with uh, shooting everything, you know, as a photographer, but there's some stuff going on behind the scenes between Rita and I, some sort of diabolical stuff. Although Rita knows more about it than me. She kind of keeps me out of the loop. I'm just there to be as good a photographer as I can and help her sell her fashion line. And uh, Vincent was a sort of... Uh... Had this project almost gone on the back burners for you in the last sort of year or two? Was it a pleasant surprise when you finally heard it was going to be released now in 2023? Were you almost like say, finally, uh, that uh, we can put closure and people can get to see Carrie Fisher all these years again on their cinema movie screens one more time after seven years? And I know a glowing tribute is paid to Carrie Fisher in terms of this movie as well. Yes. You, you you have to imagine, of course, it's going to go on the back burner because you that much time passes. And I mean, I've seen Fred tons of times since the and his son, Sandy, they were both, you know, they work as a team, uh, Fred and Sandy, his son. And I've seen them at so many events and they give me little updates, but there was no real specific update that the film was finally coming out. So to hear that it was coming out and and find out about it rather quickly it was ple it was a very pleasant surprise and i really thought the trailer looks great you know so and 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 carrie you know my memory of her was so of so such a fond memory of her and that was a really hard time cuz we we broke for christmas we we had fallen behind schedule so we had to you know it, it, the film was going to take longer than they thought so we had to come back in early 2017 to finish the movie for about a month and so in 2016, we all left just before Christmas. And as you know, Carrie passed over that holiday. It was a shocker. And then we all showed up back in January 
And, you know, our hearts were broken. And I remember the first night of shooting after we all came back, uh, Nilo, our first AD, brought us all together in a big room where we were shooting and we all held hands and, and just uh, more than just a moment of silence in memory of Carrie. It was and very hard on the kids. They, they, especially Kira, you know, she really bonded with Carrie because they were shooting a lot of scenes together. And it was very hard on her that Carrie was gone, you know? Yeah, and you mentioned that about Kira. I was just going to bring her up, who plays the, one of the principal characters of, uh, of Violet as well. Obviously, she's thrilled. She's delighted about being cast in this role. Such a big break for her as young sort of actress. Was it almost almost like um a surreal for her to come back to sort of find that out that sort of news and uh it, were you were you lucky in one sense that you would so much of the movie shot uh before that sort of happened that event occurred that uh, that you'd only really to close it up in terms of finishing off some certain scenes with uh, Kira yeah I think we were all very happy that Carrie had completed her role and, and it was, you know, it was on film. Uh, but it, I think it was hardest on Kira. She wasn't expecting Carrie to return, of course, but the idea that Carrie was gone was very hard on her. Yeah. She was only 12 years old at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Vincent Spano, in terms of you've shot projects and movies all over the world, in terms of the backdrop of uh, Tuscany, Italy, to film uh, this sort of project as well, was there many sort of uh, uh, outdoor locations, sort of block shooting in terms of this sort of movie, or did you specifically focus in one part of sort of Tuscany and sort of one area? And uh, was the budget at the time when you were filming, uh, was it a fairly a big budget? It was a big budget. It was an ample budget that allowed us to do whatever needed to be done for the film. Our main location in Tuscany was San Gimignano. Fantastic little town up in the hills. A very well-known uh, sort of Renaissance symbolic town. In other words, it's very much uh, preserved from its Renaissance days. And the view outside the hotel where I stayed of the, the Tuscan fields was just stunning. I took some beautiful photos out there and the locations we shot at were right there in town. You could literally you know, walk out the hotel and walk to the square next door or right in front of the hotel we were shooting there. But then we went to other locations that were uh, somewhat near there and they were just beautiful locations. You know, I've been, I've had a sort of a second career in Italy since the 80s. You know, I did four movies there in the 80s, came back in 2008, did three more projects, uh, and then went back for this in 2016. And so I have been very blessed to work in so many locations, Sicily, numerous locations in Sicily, I've worked up in Pisa, Tirrenia, Massa Carrara, um, Florence, Tuscany, uh, and especially, of course, Rome and outside of Rome and at Cinecitta. So for me, doing the film in Italy and in Rome was like going back, going back to a place where I had many, many great experiences. And uh, Vincent Spano, you speak about your love there for Italy and uh, in terms of Europe. And I suppose the one thing about Italy is you're not too far away from Ireland. You're only a two hour, two and a half hour sort of flight, That's which right. is nothing given uh, the United States in terms of you could fly from one part of uh, Texas to the other in terms of Dallas to maybe San Antonio and you could be on a plane for three or four hours, let, let alone going from one state to the other. So so um, has it ever been in the pipeline for Vincent Spano, maybe when he delves back into Europe or ventures to Italy, maybe the next time to pop over to the UK and maybe venture over to Ireland as well? Absolutely. Now, I must admit that I've gotten a little spoiled being in the film industry. I find myself waiting usually for an opportunity to go somewhere to work there because it's 
it's such a different experience because first of all, if you get a film that shoots in Ireland, let's say, you get flown there, you get put up, you get fed, and you get to have an experience there that brings you very deep into the into the place and the people. Because you'd probably stay a, a while, could be a month, two months, and you go to all these tremendous locations, you meet all these people, There's there are local people who work on the film, and and then offset, you you meet people, and so I guess I I put off just playing travel sometimes to wait for that opportunity to go work somewhere on a film, or create my own project, find my own project, and bring it there as a location. So that is the only reason I haven't gone to Ireland. I also haven't been to Asia yet. I haven't been to Australia. These are places that I've sort of been waiting for for a, a project. It's just it's just a, a habit because I grew up in making movies and being, you know, traveling to all these places and being flown there and taken care of. And then, like I said, getting deep into the place with these experiences. And I sort of, I, I, I wait and I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. I, I sometimes it's like, well, what am I waiting for? I should, no doubt there'll be a WB Yates or a Seamus Heaney project for you in the near future. Uh, I Vincent hope so. Will Bible. you put in a good word for me? <laughs> no Listen, problem. I'd love indeed. to come over there and work with Irish filmmakers. I mean, that would be awesome. You know, I worked with the great Peter O'Toole. I don't know if you knew I did a film called oh, Creep. Yeah. And Peter. Uh, it was one of the great experiences. And Peter would tell me his stories of growing up there and it was just amazing. I'd sit in his trailer and he'd tell me these stories. And, you know, I guess he was living in Cork at the time. Yeah, west of Ireland, I suppose, yeah. the west of Ireland. Many people don't realise when you talk about culture and heritage of Ireland, it's really the west you really got to go to. Dublin might be in the east coast, it might be the capital, but if you want all the, the Vikings, the Norman castles, uh, the monasteries, the, the Celtic sort of the real heritage, it's the west coast of Ireland, that's where you got to go. Hmm. I hear you. Yeah, I never had a chance to visit Peter, but I mean, he was very kind, you know, with the invitation. And then uh, I went to an event, you know, sometimes somebody might say, sure, sure, you know, but you're not really sure if when they go off to their home, they want their privacy in there and to be let be. And I saw him do, I think, Pygmalion on Broadway. And I just double checked in. I said, hey, Peter, what do you... Are you going to be spending any time in Cork? And he's like, no, I'm going to be here. I'm very busy. There's a lot of projects and stuff. And I didn't press the issue. But there was sort of a floating invitation that I never took advantage of because I just I just could tell it, it wasn't uh, appropriate. Uh, Vincent Spano, I'm afraid time is nearly caught up with us. So for the final 30 seconds, you might enlighten all our audience, all our viewers, why they should go out in mass to watch Wonder Well on their cinemas and what's in store for them. I think it's a terrific, it's 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 sort of, there's a mythology to it. It's, it's like a fairy tale and there's all these terrific young actors in it. Uh, you know, like I said, Nell Tiger Free and Sebastian Croft, Nico, Kira, and then there's the great Rita Ora, the great Carrie Fisher, and then there's also Megan and Lloyd who play her parents, and they're terrific. And it was just there's a lot there's a lot of love in this movie, and um, a real strong bonding of the family within the story. And I'd say it's a terrific family film, and excellent for the for the family and for the kids to go see. On that note, uh, Vincent Spano, for me, Jim Condon, a pleasure talking to you on the airways this evening as we look in joyful anticipation of the release of Wonderwell in nationwide in cinemas throughout Ireland. Uh, Vincent Spano plays the role of uh, Franco alongside the great Carrie Fisher, Rita Ora and Kira Millward. Uh, do check it out, Wonderwell, seven years in the making, the final film of Carrie Fisher's iconic uh, career and obviously the, the iconic career or Vincent Spano is still very much going on from uh, strength to strength. But for the moment, for me, Jim Conlon, to you, Vincent Spano, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Thank you. Same to you, Jim. <laughs>